vision. And he designed it perfectly the first time, right? As, this, as an automatic being would. But what happened is that humans didn't accept the program. Why? We have to be free, right? So that you're in me. It's a very nice quote. Robert's quote was excellent. Because that's the dilemma that manifests through this process. So yes, we find out that Neo is not actually as new as he thought he was. He's in fact the sixth version of the One, right? The mm-hmm. One is actually uh, another system of control, so to speak. In fact, it represents the, the Luciferic temptation of self-aggrandizement for Neo to be the One. That's why he has to get over being the One to actually end up becoming new. Again, back to the very beginning with this idea of Neo as new, that's the major archetype. Not to become the One, as any good Buddhist would tell you, you're just going to have as much karma as the One as you are as a flea, right? So you need to become something totally new, which is a, a, basically a self, a continuous process of self-transformation. It doesn't stop. That's why at the end of the third movie, Neo transforms into this. He explodes, right? But in that explosion, there's what's left is a, a light. There's like actually a light form that is left for a fraction of a second, where there's no physical body. There's just this form of light, and then there's the sunset it comes through Sati. So. All, yeah, it's all related to that. Jeff? Um, what is the importance of violence? Of the what? Violence? Good, yeah, excellent question, because, you know, if you probably count it up in terms of minutes, there would be more violence in the movie than there would be any of this stuff, right? The scenes that I showed. So it's an extremely violent movie, right? And if we take the movie, you know, I, I, I was recently reading, there was a guy wrote an entire book called The Exodus of the Matrix. It's, you know, hundreds of pages. And he goes through many, many, many things, but never gets to the spiritual aspect. So when he looks at the violence, this guy's named Peter Lowe, he's a philosopher. He looks at the violence and says it invalidates the whole movie for him. That for him, the violence, there's no way to, quote, explain it. You know, he was, so he was talking about, well, you know, they went into the power plant in the second movie and they blew it up. They didn't evacuate people. You know, get them. They blew them up and all those people would die in the Matrix. And every time they shoot the guards, right, those are those, they would die in the matrix. They would die in, in their little pod, right, because they're batteries. And they would, you know, anytime you shoot an agent, the agent's really just taking over someone's body, and that person would die. So yes, uh, very interesting moral quandaries. At the same time, if we read it as a spiritual expression, then what we're we're, we're not doing is we're not physicalizing it into as if it were real in the way it is visually real. So, the, so it's, a, it's a Hollywood movie, and they have to show it, it visually. I'm not arguing that they, they have these archetypes in mind as they're making this movie. I actually am very interested to see what, you know, the extent to which they have some kind of picture. The Gnostics have some similar aspects to this. Um, but if we read it in a way as a, almost as we would read a dream, right? I don't know if some of you are familiar with dream interpretation techniques, um, where figures that appear to you they're not, it's not if my, you know, sister appears before me in my dream. I'm not going to wake up and go, oh, and call her up and say, you're in my dream, and then act like she should know that she was in my dream, right? <laughs> Although maybe that can happen. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things that happen in the world. But most of the time, that's going to be a representation that is actually a part of myself. So if we look at this whole thing as a spiritual dialogue between the, in, the transforming human being, the Trinity, Neo, and Marcus, the Trinity of those three, then it's a, it's a, a picture, played out cinem- cinematically, of how that transformation occurs in the inner life. So the violence that is presented is, in a certain way, the violence that we experience every time you close your eyes and try to go to sleep, and can't just like go to sleep. You have, you have things that are happening in your head, you don't know why they're there, you deal with them. You have emotions that are happening, you don't know why they're there, you deal with them. You have actions that you're like, I can't believe I just did that. And all this stuff is a part of our experience. And we have, that's not just random. Those are elements that all have to come together. And a transformed human being has to deal with all of those aspects. So the violence, in a way, is a pictorial representation taken through the Hollywood extreme. Of the wrestling in the individual with the spiritual archetypes that are present around us, the Luciferic and the Armonic in particular. So I think that's where the violence goes. Yeah. I thought I'd make a comment about violence because the word the word violence is related to the word vital, which is related to the word life. Mm-hmm. And 
life is really a process of being decisive, I mean really being alive. And every time you make a decision, you kill off another possibility. So staying within that metaphor, um, living is violent, and yet it also, as you said, it, it keeps um, that ongoing process of transformation. The violence also creates new life. Right. And in the end, this is where I, where I would differ from the guy who said it killed the whole movie for him, is that in the end, what is the final message that we're given? Not violence, right? Surrender. That's, the, that's, the, that's what allows the final transformation to occur. Not a continuing fight, but an, ex, an acceptance of the other being from the in, inner, in, inner space. Yeah, well, let's get stuff on the Is there a uh, significance to you in that he's the sixth version of Neo yeah. and he moves into ultimately the seventh version yes. and perfection? Well, he's the, he's the yeah. So, uh, one possible reading is that the five previous versions relate to the five books of the Torah, mm -hmm. right? And then in the sixth book, you get the New Testament. That's, that's the Christ, that's the new being. So that's, that's one reading of it. And that whole process requires, in a certain way, a bunch of preparation. So all of this is actually a, a slice of the cosmic scene of which there are things before and there are many things after. So the third movie ends. I argue there's no, they're not going to ever create another one. And at that point, and this is the, leading us into the future, the picture that we get, uh, the transformation of Neo, is in a way standing as what kind of transformation we can all work with in our lives as a, into the future in a healthy way. Um, yeah. So where is God in all of this? Excellent question. Um, not on the outside. Let's put it that way. Um, there are also there are there are more beings here than we than we've talked about. Um, in particular, in the third movie, some of the, the the periphery starts to come together. But God, as a singular entity, is not present in an explicit way in the movies. But the representative of God as the Christ incarnating in, through the physical... The, well, actually, if you want to link it to the spiritual scientific perspective, you have two things in the matrix. You have the taking of the, of the pill. This is the ego. Then you have the transformation of the, of the thinking. This is the astral. Then you have the etheric. And then you have the physical, which is the picture of the way that the Christ incarnated into Jesus of Nazareth according to the spiritual scientific tradition. So there's that that aspect is, is very present, but it's not explicit in the cinematography. I, I just have a question about the oracle. Yeah. And if you can talk about that and then it's not the she says it's you've already made the choice. You have to understand why but you, you have to could you talk about that? Well, we you know about yeah. So the oracle is a spiritual being, and the oracle is in a certain way a divine being. She is a, she is a being of a very high wisdom, right? And so this being is kind of a Sophia being, is able to work with Neo in a very unique way. And Neo, as the Christ, is working out his karma. That's what he's doing. And the way that, that he's helped along in that path is by being of the oracle. He was able to help him and certainly meet his karma. She says to him in the first movie, so you're here, you're, you're trying to find out if you're the one, and she says, being the one is like being in love. You just know it, right? And this is something he does not know here at all. He has, and, you know, he's standing under the temet nase, this Latin phrase for know thyself, because that is what this being of the oracle is bringing. And she plays a pivotal role in the third one by herself working with, directly with Agent Smith as a correlate to what Neo is going to have to be doing. So yes, there's the Oracle is very interesting, and she's got a lot of interesting. Like, I'm sure there's more about her that I'm I haven't thought about yet. But she's a program, right? She is quite a program. Yes. Yes. One of the things that really fascinates me about this movie is this idea of moving between these different dimensional worlds. And I think it's one of the things that fascinates me about anthroposophy, too, is that...